Good morning all the new PG aspects. Welcome to short video tequilas for the neat PG preparation with Dr. Murli Bharadvaj. Let us quickly master those topics which are most hunted and haunted by the examiner. In tomorrow's NEET PG, you are going to get this ECG. So what is the classical thing you are seeing? There is a ST segment elevation diffusely in all the, in multiple leads. So such a diffuse ST elevation in all leads without any reciprocal depression. Typically, when anterior leads, antremal MI is there, there are always certain reciprocal leads. Generally, posterior wall MI, then anterior leads are the reciprocal, precordial leads. So, no reciprocal changes, diffuse ST elevation, then you should recognize the acute pericarditis, one of the favorite ECG to come in the NIPG exam. Now, hyaline arteriosclerosis, hyperplastic arteriosclerosis, you should know two to three points, sure shot to come. So, when you see hyaline arteriosclerosis, diabetes, because there is a non enzymatic glycosylation of the basement membrane proteins, they are called amadori products. Amadori products. So when you need chronic hypertension with an increased pressure that pushes the plasma proteins to seep out of the vessel wall, that leads to highly natural process. So there is a highly thickening and deposition of the protein, deposition of the protein in the arterial wall. And that gives that pink glassy vessel thickening with the narrowing of the lumen, narrowing of the lumen. That is highly atherosclerosis, diabetes and chronic hypertension. Then you can see onions, onions, hyperplastic atherosclerosis. So it is also called malignant, typically seen in acute malignant hypertension. Malignant hypertension means either you have papilledema or target organ damage like stroke, etc. So, hyperplastic arteriosclerosis is a feature of acute malignant hypertension, whereas hyaline is more chronic, right? So, here there is a smooth muscle hyperplasia in response to very high pressure and that gives the onion skin appearance of the vessels is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, hyperlipo Proteinemias, one of the favorite questions of the examiner. Tomorrow in the NEET PG FMG exam hall, you will remember Dr. Nurli Bharadwaj. Let us master this. Three to four points about each of it. Type 1, it is a rare childhood disease, orthogonal recession. And what is the cause for the type 1 hyperlipoproteinemia? There is a deficiency of the lipoprotein lipase in the capillaries. Number 1. Number two, there is also a defect in epoprotein, EPOC2, C2 is what you need to remember. And because of that, what increases? Chylomicrons. What is the importance of chylomicrons? They carry the exogenous triglycerides. Exogenous. You are, if, if the person is eating from outside, egg yellow or chicken, mutton, etc. Exogenous triglycerides typically are uh, unnatural increases there. Serum triglycerides will be significantly elevated. That lead to pancreatitis is what you need to remember. So what do you see in laboratory finding? Eruptive skin xanthomas. And if you happen to centrifuge the blood, then there is a turbid supernatant and triglycerides are more than 1000 up to 10,000 triglycerides that is how you recognize type 1 type 1 hyperlipoprotein don't forget lipoprotein lipase 
and APOC2. Then type 2 hyperlipoproteinemia. It is autosomal dominant and there is a LDL receptor deficiency in the liver. And the LDL is more than 190. LDL is more than 190. And once more in type 2 you have type 2A. Sorry. Type 2A and 2B. Type 2A and 2B. Type 2A and 2B. So how do you differentiate type 2A and 2B? Type 2A triglyceride is less than 300. Type 2B the triglyceride is more than 300. And in type 2 hyperlipoproteinemia, it is the LDL receptor deficiency in the liver. That is the underlying problem. Don't forget autosomal dominant is one of the favorite MCQ of the examiner. Now, there are two types of type 2, type 2A, 2B we discussed. One is called acquired hypercholesterolemia, other is familial hypercholesterolemia. So, acquired hypercholesterolemia, where do you get primary hypothyroidism? There is a decreased LDL receptor synthesis and function. Similarly, nephrotic syndrome, there is an increase in LDL because after all, all these lipoproteins have a protein. So, because of the hypoalbuminemia, due to losing the protein into the urine in nephrotic syndrome there is an increase in LDL. Similarly, whenever there is any extra hepatic cholestasis outside the liver, it causes an increased cholesterol because any extra hepatic cholestasis in the bile duct obstruction prevents the excretion of the bile into the gut and that makes an increase in the cholesterol due to the blockage of the bile excretion, bile salts, bile salts cannot go into the gut. So because of that there is uh, a increase in cholesterol and extra hepatic cholestasis which is all called acquired hypercholesterolemia. Once more tell me one of the favorite questions, what are the three causes of acquired hypercholesterolemia, why the cholesterol will shoot up the primary hypothyroidism, nephrotic syndrome and extra hepatic cholesterol is three things you should remember. Then you have familial hypercholesterolemia. It is also autosomal dominant deficiency of LDL receptors. There is a premature coronary arterial disease and strokes. Then what is pathognomonic doctor? Tendon xanthoma on the HLE's tendon. Pathognomonic of familial hypercholesterolemia. Xanthelasmus, which are those raised plaques on the eyelid classically found. Then comes type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia. This is also called familial dysbeta lipoproteinemia. So that is very important to remember. So this is also called remnant removal disease. So normally chylo remnants need to be removed. So that is the whole problem in this because there is a decreased APOE ApoE, ApoE2 synthesis. That's the reason this chylo remnants which are carrying the triglycerides cannot be cleared by the liver, and that is the reason you get increased IDL, increased IDL, even IDL also need a removal. And uh, just like major source of exogenous triglycerides is chylo, chylomicrons. Endogenous triglycerides are mainly handled by VLDL. So that get affected, there is an increase in IDL. And in these people, LDL is less than 190. That is very important to remember. Less than 190 in case of hyperlipoproteinemia type 3. But the triglycerides are more than 300 because IDL, IDL is not clear. So there is an increase in IDL, decrease in LDL. And triglycerides are more than 300 and there are palmar xanthomas. Then finally comes the type 4 hyperlipoproteinemia. If the tomorrow's need PG exam, most common dyslipidemia is familial hypertriglyceridemia. 
In this, there is an increased VLDL. As I told you, VLDL is mainly important for handling the endogenous triglyceride. Whereas, chylomicrons are important for exogenous triglyceride. Alright? Now, in type 4 hyperlipidemia, triglyceride is more than 300, but it is less than 1000. Serum cholesterol levels, normal. Eruptive xanthomas will be there. It is autosomal dominant. It can even be associated with excess alcohol consumption, OCPs, diabetes mellitus. Anything can lead to the development of type 4 hyperlipoproteinemia is what you need to remember. So now let us summarize, doctor. Type 1 lipoprotein elevated is chylomicron, cholesterol and also triglycerides are elevated. Type 2A, LDL is elevated, cholesterol only. Type 2B, LDL and VLDL are elevated, so cholesterol and triglycerides. Type 3, it is the IDL which is elevated and cholesterol and the triglycerides, both of them. Type 4, triglycerides only are elevated, it is VLDL. Type 5, both the cholesterol and the triglycerides are elevated, it is both VLDL and chylomicrons is what you need to remember. So what are these doctor? These are the type 3 and type 4. What do you see in type 3 and the type 4? You see eruptive xanthomas. Eruptive xanthomas. Please don't forget. And this is what tomorrow's need PG exam. Image based question xanthelasma. So please don't forget. Download the Incas app just for 999 rupees. 3 year subscription. You get 2000 HD videos, 60 full scale practice, 70,000 MCQ question bank, 3500 quiz tournament, 70,000 MCQs as revision flashcards, almost 1 lakh PowerPoint slides. Just for 999 rupees, 3 year subscription, only 1 rupee per day is your need PG coaching cost. That is what Murli Bharadwaj stands for all our COVID variants. Thank you.